How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. <laughs> this is fun. Shall we do this? We shall. Okay. I think they're ready. Are they? Yeah, I think you. I think maybe you should do like an intro kind of thing or something. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. I'm Brian Clark, a cloud developer advocate, and I'm joined here today with Amanda Silver. Hi, I'm Amanda Silver. I'm the director of program management for Visual Studio and VS Code. Awesome. So I think I want to pair program. Um, I'm a, usually a Node developer, but I'm interested and always happy to join in on checking out other languages to learn and, and provide another pair of eyes to look for little bugs and things like that. Yeah. So what I'm going to show you today, actually, you know, it doesn't matter what you program in. Okay. I'll show it in C Sharp, but it works for Node. I, in the keynote at Build, I did it. I did it for a Node application, but it works for Python or Ruby or Go. It doesn't matter what programming language you're using. Get it actually here. works. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's kind of crazy, but I'll show it for you in C Sharp because that's just the app that I happen to have uh, running here sure. right now. So what is this called that we're going to be doing? This is called Visual Studio Live Share, and Ooh. so the idea is basically that that we had heard from a lot of developers out there especially those developers who are really you know, focused on their time to market, and that's how they choose which tools to use right. or processes to use or how much process to use. Um, that's, we've, we've heard from them that basically the collaboration mechanisms that exist for developers today, where collaboration doesn't really happen until after you make a commit, that's right. too late for many of them. Yeah, yeah. And so we found that a lot of them were you know, merging in the same trunk or, you know, doing all kinds of weird, wacky things so that they could have a much tighter development cycle. Like we had one one team that we had interviewed who had said that they they did not want their development team to grow beyond the size of the room that they had allocated for their team because it would be too much work to work with somebody who is in another room physically. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so the collaboration between developers is critical, especially for those teams who are really trying to f get it out as quickly as possible. Um, and so we came up with, with Visual Studio Live Share, which basically allows you to have a remote collaboration session using your own tools, but sharing the same code context live. That sounds excellent. There's been many times where, especially working remotely, uh, the tools that I might use, I'd have to get on a phone, I'd have to open up another app to see screen share with people. Um, so. It's, it's going to improve upon that, basically, improve that experience and pairing yeah. that way? Hopefully. OK, let's, let's check let's it out. Let's show you. So, so what you can see on my screen here is I have an application already running, right? And if I tab over to Visual Studio, you can see that I've actually been running this app for 17 minutes. I might be deep in the midst of a debug session, right? right? But that's exactly oftentimes the, the point where you need somebody else's collaboration to help you debug an issue, yeah, absolutely. right? And so this might be a great place for me to share the context with somebody else who I would like to have help with, right? Yes, yeah. So all I need to do after I install the live share extension into Visual Studio is to go up to this share button here. Okay. And just click on share. And you could see that what will happen is Did you need to install stuff ahead of time. I to needed get that? to install the live share extension, okay. which is just a normal extension for Visual Studio that's available on the marketplace. Okay. Um, and then that's automatically copied to my clipboard. And then I can go to whatever is our communications channel. I'm using Teams. We could be using Skype. It could be using Slack. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and then all I have to do is just paste the join link to you, right? OK, I got that. So now I could just you, click on it. You could just click on it. Excellent. And it basically launches a browser that recognizes what you have installed on your machine, and it knows that you have VS Code installed on your machine. And once you click, okay. Join, but to pr provide some more context, here, you're writing in C sharp. C sharp. I don't have. I'm on a Mac. Yep. I don't have C sharp or anything like that installed. Right. I'm using. V I, I work with Node a lot, JavaScript, and I have Visual Studio Code installed on here. That's and right. This, this is going to just connect to that. Uh, well, basically, your VS Code instance is going to use the context that's running on my machine to populate VS Code. Get out of here. Yeah. Check it out. All right. So <laughs> I'm so excited. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Click on that. Okay. VS Code is opening up. Yep. I see Visual Studio Live Share loading file tree. Yep. So what you'll see is that basically your file tree will be populated by the context of my application. 
Okay. Uh, and this will take just a quick second. But basically, the other thing that's happening is it's actually connecting automatically, because I'm in a debug session, it's automatically connecting to the web application that I'm building right now. This is nuts. Isn't it kind of crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe this, really. <laughs> so go back to VS Code right now. Okay. So what you could see here is that we're in the midst of a debug session. So you have watch windows, call stacks. I'm not at a breakpoint right now. Um, I could pause execution. Sharp. Yeah, this is C sharp. So I could pause execution here. Um, and, and what you'll see now is that you actually you know, will have a call stack at that point because I had paused execution. And that's over right? here on the left hand side. Yeah, so if you, yeah. if you made that you know, larger, you can actually see what the call stack looks like. Let me you minimize can see the these worker here. thread and the, wow, you know, everything for that context. If you go back to the file explorer in Visual Studio, sure. um, you can actually see that that's entirely populated by the context of my machine. And what's great is it brought me right to the file that this breakpoint came in. And I didn't have to go and try and find it on my machine. Right. Because right? over a normal screen sharing session, I have to try and follow along with where you're going. You're calling right. it out to me. Right. Exactly. Right. So, oh. so wait, wait, wait. So let's, let's get there for a second. Okay. A I'm, second. A, I'm just too excited. <laughs> That's what's going on here. Because what's kind of cool <coughs> here is, so I just showed you all of the debugging session and stuff like that. So when we're automatically joined in a debug session, in the context of a debug session, mm -hmm. then... Um, then basically you have you will be automatically following me no matter what oh. right and so as as we step we have a shared context for the code that we're looking at yeah. right but when we're editing we might actually want to have a little bit more independence yes right yeah, so let me stop stop debugging for a second okay and i'm just going to stop hit stop here um, and now what you can see is and let me just Close this real quick. Now what you can see is if I, select, if I put my cursor here, um, you should be able to follow me by clicking on that little thing on the lower left-hand corner where there's the one. Little people icon? Yep. And oh, you can okay. say currently editing, blah, click on that. Okay, and wow. And now you can see where my cursor is. Excellent. So I could go ahead and, oops. And that's not what I wanted to do. Let me go ahead and do this. And you could see me say, hi, Brian. Right? Whoa. But that could be any code. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. in fact, you could write your own code. Like you could put your cursor right after that, that commit. OK. Um, that comment. Create I need a new to learn line. From C -sharp here. Create a new line. I'm going to teach okay. you right now. All right, now. here we go. Will so I get IntelliSense? Just, just type out what's above. Type out build web host. Oops. Build web host dot, uh, let's see, dot, or that's the args now, and then do run. Args, okay, there yeah. we go. Yeah, just copy the line above, dot. Got it. Did you get IntelliSense on the dot? Go back to the run. Let's try you that again. You see how you're getting the... Uh, yeah, I'm noticing it's popping. Yeah, you're wow. getting the IntelliSense that's populated by my machine. Wait now, a minute, what's that star <laughs> icon that's showing up there? Yeah, so that's kind of crazy. So, so there are two things that I was talking about at this build conference. One is Visual Studio Live Share. The other is Visual Studio IntelliCode. Okay. Now, IntelliCode is basically the idea of taking AI and making the developer environment more productive, the developer more productive, by basically empowering them with machine with AI, with artificial intelligence. And so the star is basically telling you what's the most likely API call that you would make given the code context that you're currently in. So I, as a Node developer, trying to learn more about C Sharp, I can just start getting my hands dirty, writing C Sharp, and yeah. know what's the common things totally. to for totally, scenarios totally. I'm running into. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go too deep down that path because yeah. I know we want to show yeah. more about this. There's more to show about VS Live Share. Yeah, so I think one of the things that you saw here is that you get the statement completion. You, you'll get squiggles. So, like, let's say we make this into an error and we just make that, that line, like, not really complete. Okay. You'll see that there's that red squiggle after yeah. the args. And if I hover over that, I can yeah, see. Yeah, it says that an identifier is expected. So you're getting like the full compilation of you know, a normal C Sharp compiler, even though you haven't installed anything specific to C Sharp on your machine. I, I'm so baffled by this. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, it's a really great way to kind of learn a new programming language or a new API, but it's also a really great way to enlist the help with somebody, right? Like you might be a Node developer, and I might be a C Sharp developer, but you, we're 
you, I could certainly use some help from you in terms of client-side JavaScript, right? Absolutely. And so, like, this is a great way for us to collaborate on stuff, uh, even though we might not be always working on the same code, but you have expertise that I need. Wor two worlds merging together <laughs> yeah, here. It's a beautiful right? thing. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we, so, so we've made a many, uh, additions to this over the last few months. Some of the things that we added was the ability to view a shared server. So when we first launched, you saw that shared web application that was being hosted in my local host. Yes. It was not exposed to the general internet. Right. We were just hitting my local host so, in that case. And that's, normally, in order to do that, I would have to like expose my computer to the internet so that other people can connect to it. Or I would have to do that. Right. And so one of the ways that you can do that is by going up here and going to manage shared servers. OK. And that allows you to either add the local host that's currently running in your diagnostic session or to add a new you know, port if I wanted to create a local host on 3000 specifically or some particular port that I know has some functionality that, that we have a dependency on. And so can you, let's say you have more components than just this one server or let's API. Let's say I had a WebSocket on. that I wanted to expose. Like yeah. I could do that this way as well. Wow. Yeah. That's excellent. The other thing that we've added is um, the ability to share a terminal. So if I go up here and I say shared terminal, and I'm going to do a read write in this case, which this is not just like a, a sandbox terminal. This is a real shared terminal that I'm exposing to you uh, <laughs> on my machine. So I, I have free reign to your machine for Well, mine. I mean, I'm giving you th uh, that permission. So there's a level of trust involved. There is a level of trust involved yeah. here, but I'm basically. Trust me, though. <laughs> I'm sharing the terminal, <laughs> and you can see that in a second a terminal will pop up, and it pops up for me, oh, and wow. it should also pop up for you. Yes, it right? did. Right, right. So now to start typing, and type... Um, can, I, can I type ls? Yeah. This is PowerShell, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Wow. So, uh, so we could do like a push d, and then an sm star test, and now you can hit tab. You hit tab. What? <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Like, you just basically completed no. my own command line in the in. I don't believe terminal. my eyes. <laughs> so now we can hit Enter, and you can see that we changed the folder directory. Now just type .net. No, 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 no. Like .net, like it's a word. D-O-T. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> N-E-T, yeah, space. Space. Test. Test. Just like NPM test or node test. Sure, and sure. hit enter. Now this is actually kicking off our tests for this application. So you just initiated it. We are both looking at the test results at the same time. And it'll finish in just a second. What? This is a fairly large application, so. Wow. Starting test execution. <laughs> But you can see that you've basically initiated this this command prompt uh, for us. So what I what I like about this is that you, as the driver, you have the control because I'm very security minded. I'm paranoid sure. person. Yeah. And so something like this, it's interesting that you have control over it. And that like maybe if I started like joking around trying to do things, to I could you kick can just you out at any out, point. Right? I could kick you out at any point. I can decide what level of access I want to give you in terms right. of like, do I want to share the ser server? Do I want to share the terminal? Yeah. Uh, you know, we're looking at more features from a security perspective down the road as well. Um, but basically, it's like you give out the, the link to the share session to who you, you want to collaborate with you on that code base. That's excellent. And so that, that link is always going to be unique to you so no one can really like it's, jump into it. It's unique to your session. So okay. basically it's unique to the the computer plus the folder. Excellent. Wow. Yeah. I can see myself using this quite often. Yeah, it's actually I think it's a great way to work with somebody to learn a new API or to debug an issue. One of the things that we've heard from a lot of folks is that they have remote people on their team, and this makes it a lot easier to collaborate with remote folks. Yeah. We've also heard from uh, devs that have developers with different accessibility needs on their team that uh, you know there are folks who use Magnifier. and it can be really hard to do a screen sharing session with somebody who uses magnifier all the time because it, you're just not used to it. Or like voice narration, right? We have folks who are entirely blind who, who are starting to use this. Um, 
Whereas if you were to listen to somebody who used a narrator mm -hmm. to do their dev work, and there are people out there who do this, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would just sound like a stream of like bits running past your ear. Right, it goes they so can fast. It. Yeah. And yeah. they can hear it. And so this is a good way for you to collaborate with them because they can use the modality that they need. You can use the mod modality that you need. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of optimized for you. This is just fantastic, Amanda. <laughs> I'm so blown away. Cool. So after this, we're going to keep collaborating so you can teach me some more C Sharp <laughs> yeah. in, in this project? Yeah, may, yeah, we should do that. I heard maybe. No, I want definitely. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> well, you've got to teach me some Node stuff. Sounds great. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all for joining. And what we saw today was Visual Studio Live Share. Go check it out. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>